Amen. Thank God for the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. We're grateful. God's given unto us a name that is above every name. Amen. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. Hallelujah. To the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God for the name. You know, one of the, uh, you can be seated. One of the um, most life-changing books that um, I ever read, particularly when I was younger, was Brother Hagin's The Name of Jesus. And, um, and he, he taught, that came from a seminar he taught, and he, uh, he used um, as an outline the uh, book The Wonderful Name of Jesus by E.W. Kenyon. And, um, you know, both those books are just, are just awesome. And uh, the name of Jesus has authority. It has power. Amen. It is, it is the name above every name. Hallelujah. We want to welcome all of you watching by Facebook, those that are here in person. Uh, we're glad to have you in person. Uh, how many enjoyed last Sunday? Oh, my, that was, that was good stuff. Amen. I just, I really, I really got blessed. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, it's always good to um, get, get fresh perspective, uh, even on the stuff you've heard a billion times. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, we're glad to be here today. We had to actually go to and be in, um, <clears throat> in Myrtle Beach, my niece's wedding on uh, Thursday and Friday. We got back last night at 2.40 in the morning. And um, I think by the time we unloaded the car and got, and I got, I laid down a bit, it was 3.10. And uh, hallelujah. You know, so you, got, you get up going, Shundai, glory to God, hallelujah. You know, the greater one's in me because I'm, I'm not making it on my own today. Hallelujah. But he is on the inside. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we, we welcome y'all and um, glad that you're here. And I want to remind you of our Tuesday night Zoom Bible, I mean, prayer service. Um, we're still, you know, we're still limited in, in meeting in person simply because uh, we have we got the offer to come over here, but you know, so many people are so many places to get all the way over here on Sunday mornings is um, um, a little more difficult. Uh, but um, so we're doing a Tuesday night pr uh, Zoom prayer service, Wednesday night virtual midweek service, and um, and then of course here on Sundays at twelve thirty, one o'clock, somewhere in that time frame. Um, and, and reason we don't we can't just come out of the gate at twelve thirty is um, they've got to practice. And, you know, they don't get, they, they can't get together except Sunday morning. It's almost impossible um, with schedules right now. We don't have our own permanent place to go meet, and, you know, and, and have stuff set up all the time. I mean, if you've got to go practice, every time you've got to practice, you've got to bring everything in and set it all up. You know, you spend, you spend 45 minutes setting up just to practice, and then you've got to break it all down. So that's, it's just not working to do that. But our building cometh. Amen. Hallelujah. We're grateful for the opportunity that's been extended to us by New Life Family Church to uh, meet while, um, you know, uh, we've been, quote, booted because of COVID. You know, can't meet where we were meeting. But God is still good. Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. We're still born again. Amen. We didn't lose our salvation. Praise God. Amen. 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 Well, um, we want to receive this morning, Sunday morning, tithe and offering. If you need an offer envelope, you can raise your hand. If you're giving electronically, you can go ahead and um, get that ready using uh, Cash App or PayPal. And uh, you can send that in. Praise the Lord. Amen. And everybody say, God is good. And the Word of God declares in the uh, book of Malachi, um, you know, God asked him a question. He said, well, the man robbed God. And uh, yet ye have robbed me, but you say, wherein have we robbed thee? And God's answer back is in tithes and offerings. Uh, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, saith the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. I mean, and prove me now here, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you shall not have room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground um, 
and neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call you blessed, for you are a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for the tithe of the offering, and we're going to pray now. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the tithers, the givers, that they, as you, they sow into the kingdom in accordance with your word, that you open up to them heaven's windows, and you pour out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Joe, receive that. Hallelujah. Once that we receive the offering, Children's Church, you're dismissed. Or before we finish the offering, we're here dismissed. <laughs> They're ready. Hallelujah. The rest of you, go ahead and open your Bibles. Hallelujah. To Leviticus chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. We're talking and sharing and ministering on the subject of keepers of the fire, keepers of the flame. Hallelujah. And uh, we kind of started this out with, with the, uh, the, the preceding message. Um, the God who answers by fire. How many know that God's the God who answers by fire? Hallelujah. When the prophets of Baal were got brought out and challenged uh, Elijah, he said, let the God who answers by fire, let him be God. Everybody said, okay. Sounds cool to me, man, you know. And uh, so they built the altar. The prophets of Baal, you know, worshiped all day, and they prophesied, and they cut themselves, and, and Elijah just came out and mocked them. Said, maybe he's on vacation. Maybe he's asleep. Shout louder. So they shouted louder. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, maybe he's asleep. Maybe he, wake him up by shouting louder. So they got louder. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and nothing happened. It came down the evening, got down the evening time. He said, okay, that's enough. He, re he rebuilds the altar up on that mount. And, um, you know, pours water all over the sacrifice and over the wood and over, and it fills up the trench they built around it. And he prays them some little short prayer, and boom, the fire came. The fire of God came, hallelujah, and consumed that sacrifice, consumed the water. The Bible says it licked it up. It consumed the button, it consumed the rocks. And then he turned around and killed all 450. Hallelujah. Now, actually, there is... A, a um, not as clear, but there is a belief also that possibly that the 400 prophets of the groves was there also, and that he actually killed 850 people, false prophets, by himself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to tell you something. We need to live in the fire. And we said this before, that if you're born in the fire, you cannot live in the smoke. Amen. And, uh, you know, this happens so many times in revivals and in, and in church history. We've seen, we've seen outpourings of God and demonstrations of God. The Azusa Street Revival of the early 1900s. You know, that was a, that was a fire um, revival. I mean, it was fire. And we had major Pentecostal denominations come out of that. Um, the Church of God in Christ, the Assemblies of God, the Church of God. Um, the Pentecostal holiness, the four square church, all came out uh, as a result of the Azusa Street Revival. Now, the Pentecostal holiness, I was, you know, my, my background's PH, and um, they were actually Nazarenes. Just study PH doctrine and Nazarene doctrine until you get to the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, they're the same. Because Nazarenes believe in holiness, believe in sanctification, okay? Um, and so forth, but they didn't believe in speaking in tongues, all right? And so you kind of had a group that kind of spun off, and I think they may have named themselves originally something like the fire baptized, you know, um, fire baptized something or whatever, but ended up becoming the Pentecostal Holiness Church <clears throat> came out of that. And so we had four or five major mainstream Pentecostal denominations birth out of a move of God that was a move of God in fire, so great was the revival that people came from all over the world to be born again, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Miracles, signs, wonders, demonstrations of the Spirit took place. Glory to God. Now, as usual, what happens in the church is over time, we will begin to let the fire go out and start living in the smoke. 
and we begin to institutionalize our experiential background. Now, I grew up, and we, had a, we would have testimony services. You know, now listen, you know, in, in, in the, you know, at least in the Pentecostal churches that I've been in, um, but, you know, in my PH church, you, you had one night a week at least that you, you had to have testimony. Okay? Now, testimony meeting went something like this. Sister so-and-so would stand up and say, Brother Pastor, I want to thank the Lord that I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Pray for me that I hold truth to the end. And they'd sit down. That's all good. Except there's things you've got to do to hold truth to the end. Okay? <clears throat> you know, and the next person would get up, and I want to, you know, he's not to be outdone. I want to thank God that I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. These 30 years, hallelujah. Pray for me that I hold truth to the end. Then I got saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost. But I got turned on to some other things, and I said, I want to thank God I'm born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, and I want to thank God that I'm going through and finishing my course strong in Jesus' name. Come on with, with me, if you will. That messed up the whole testimony service. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the thing is, we began to, you know, you know, speaking in tongues became like our red badge of courage in the Pentecostal churches. We would, um, you know, we would come and, and tarry. Now, about the Bible, Jesus told the disciples, go and tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. After that, the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And so they went, and they waited, and then when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and filled all the room where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Hallelujah. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. And then after a little bit of that, they stumbled out on the balcony, and people came out in the street, and there were people from all over, all over the area, different languages from all over the world, and they were and, and they, they said, these men are drunken, these men are drunken with new wine. And Peter lifted up his voice and said, we are not drunk like you suppose, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Then in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall, your young men shall dream dreams, and your old men shall see visions. Hallelujah. <coughs> that outpouring was the fulfilling of that which Joel spoke. Hallelujah. And on the ears of the hearers, there were 5,000 5, people in the streets that day. According to the number you can count in the Scripture, at least 19 language groups. With 120 that came out of that, out of that upper room, just fresh baptized in the Holy Ghost. And fire. I said, and Fire. And they said, we do all hear them speak in our own language the wonderful works of God. Whew. Not only was there a miracle on the tongues of the speakers because they had been filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, the hearers were having a miracle. Amen. Amen. But we, we do. We know, well, you know. So we began to tarry in our churches. We don't tarry. He's already here. Hello. I knew one guy of the church that I got, I got born again. Now, I was talking to somebody this weekend um, at the wedding. You know, the, the, somebody was just talking. We were just sitting at the, the reception there at my brother's house. And um, there was a guy sitting there and, and a nice looking younger man and uh, him and his wife. And we got talking and I just said, um, he said, so you're a preacher? Because I had prayed over the meal. Okay. He said, yeah. I said, he said, where are you? I said, I'm in Greensboro. I said, I said, where are you from? He said, Greenville. I said, well, I'm from Greenville. I'm, my wife and we grew up down there. He said, oh, he said, well, I go to St. Paul Pentecostal Holiness Church. I said, I, I grew up in St. Paul Pentecostal Holiness Church. So we had an instant connection. All right. Well, then he started talking about his family. I knew the family history. As, as a matter of fact, one of his relatives, um, great, I don't know if it was a great, great grandfather, great uncle, was the former general overseer of the PH Church International. In, in, in Oklahoma City. 
okay? And he's from the, our Greenville area, but he was, the, he was the, the, the presiding bishop, general overseer, whatever term they use for. He was the top dog. And he's his relative. Hallelujah. And I just, something just got stirred up thinking about my, about the history in the past and stuff. Amen. Glory to God. I don't know why I was going off over, over that way. I was, I was going off over that way. There was a reason I was going off over that way. Hallelujah. But I, I, I remember, oh yeah, we, we, would, we would go to the altar. But I'm sorry. That's how, I was, that's right. Because we started out at St. Paul, then our family left with the church split. Now, I was a kid. I had nothing to do with it. I just had to go where they went. Because I don't believe in church splits. Went over to faith. And then, you know, after, after a number of years when I kind of was out of church and not serving God and, you know, cooking chicken at Parker's, um, I started going back to church, you know, after, uh, and, and uh, I, after I got my job computer programming, I didn't work at Parker's anymore, so I was free on Sundays. So I, I kind of started drifting back into church because I used to work Sundays at the restaurant. And, um, you know, and God began to deal with me. So we went to first church. So we've been in all the PH churches in Greenville. We just made the rounds. Hallelujah. And, um, and I got born. I, I remember, on, you know, about a couple minutes of that, I was reading the book of Revelation. I couldn't take it anymore. I came, I, I got, I came to church on Wednesday night and just went, we got saved. So, so that's it. I got to sleep. I can't, I, Lord, let me live till Sunday and I'll get saved on Sunday. Sunday would slide by, I go, shh, made it. And then he'd say, he started dealing with me on Sunday night. Lord, give me the Wednesday, I'll get saved on Wednesday. Oh, yeah. And this, listen, we're having a discussion here. <clears throat> Are you here? I mean, you know, like, I'm reading Revelation. Man, I don't want to burn. I don't want the bark of the beast. Yeah, I don't want the mountain to fall on me. I don't want to burn in hell forever. I, I'll go Sunday. And I'd weasel out of Sunday. Then Wednesday we get here, and I'd weasel out of Wednesday. And then one night, I, I went on a Wednesday night, and the, and the pastor Gentry was not there that night. He had a fill-in speaker, uh, Linwood Hicks. <clears throat> and uh, his sermon didn't even, I don't even know what the man said. All I wanted him to do was shut up and give the altar call. I kid you not. Because, you know, I hadn't slept in two months. Because all night long, God wrestled with me. Hello. He was wrestling with me. And I was, I would make vague, I'd lie. I'm going Sunday, Lord, getting saved. He'd say, leave me alone. Let me go to sleep. I thought you said Sunday. Wednesday, I'll do it Wednesday. Well, after a period of time of that, you just can't, you got to have some sleep. Okay? He could, he could last longer than you. Amen. And so that Wednesday night, he finally got done preaching. I was like, gosh, shut up. Just get me down here. You know? And I had pulled a hamstring playing softball, so I was on crutches. So I went down to the altar, on the, you know, and uh, I, 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 I'm down there. And as I'm going down there, Grandma hops up because she sees me coming. Woo! <laughs> She's been praying. Hallelujah. And I gave my heart to Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Four days later, I went back, came down there. And, and when I, I had a guy who worked there with me at work at a computer where I was programming, he, he went to Rock Church. He said, now, Eddie, you're in a Pentecostal church, and they're going to they're gonna tell you to come tarry for the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, you don't have to tarry. Just ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. So I went down the next su Sunday night. I went to church on that Sunday night, and I got down there on the altar, and I said, Lord, I, I want to thank you that you'll fill me with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I received, and I'm telling you, like a fire went off in my belly. I'm, I've never experienced anything like it. And it went off in my belly and began to run right, like, right up in my esophagus and got to my jaws. My jaws went numb. My tongue got thick. Hallelujah. I mean, I said, I said, and I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Then I went and told Janie, and she cried. Because Janie was heathen. I mean, she was just pure heathen. H-E-A-T-H-E-N. Heathen. And she said, do you know how unmasculine it is for a boy to be a Christian? 
Now here's Mr. Jock, weightlifter, bench pressing, squats, you know what I mean? I mean, I squat 400 pounds 15 times. I'm bench pressing 360 in a pyramid workout. I mean, I'm, I'm, I look like Lou Ferrigno. I mean, literally, I could do like this and go, I was setting up a mobile home for uh, Calvary Mobile Homes. I had kind of done that as an in-between job. And uh, this little kid came running out and crawled up under the house. He said, man, I looked out the window and thought, what is Luke Ferregno doing in my front yard? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I'm not green, buddy. Didn't you notice that? <laughs> Hallelujah. And, but but that, went, that, that following Wednesday night. So that was July the uh, 11th, July the 15th, and then July the 18th. 1979, I went and picked Janie up from work. I'm going to take her to church with me. She said, take me home. Got out of my car and slammed the door and went in her house. And I said, oh, okay. And I drove off my Fiat Spider and went to church. Yeah. Na, 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 na. I'm serving Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm worthy of persecution. You know, go whatever. I go to church, Pastor Gentry's there that night, and he's preaching, you know, and he, he gets the altar call. And as I start to step out in the aisle, because you get, now you get PH church, you go to the altar after, the, after Wednesday night. Why? Because you go to the altar. Because some old saints going to come up and put their hands on you and call heaven down on you. If you're not saved, it takes everything in the world to keep you out of heaven. Because, I mean, they call, Lord, use this, save this young man. Deliver him from the devil. <coughs> Hallelujah. I can still hear Brother Paramore. As a young man, not serving God. And down at the, you know, because they always put the kids up front. And everybody gathered around. You couldn't get out. And then the, the older saints would go around the front side of the altar and get, get a hold of you. I mean, they put their hand, and we're talking about people who were birthed out of the Azusa Street era. Laying their hands on you and calling heaven down on you. Glory to God. And I turned to go down, get, start going down, and Janie walked by. <laughs> wow, cool. Well, she went down, she got born again, she got baptized in the Holy Ghost, sang four songs in four different tongues. And then the pastor tells me at the end, so he said, he said, now what you don't know is, he said, when I finished my sermon and starting to get the altar call, the back doors opened up and she walked in, she just kept right on walking. Hallelujah. Now I got off with all that because in that church, there was a man who had grown up church of God, but didn't, he, he didn't necessarily believe you had to speak in tongues to get filled with the Holy Ghost, but he'd been tarrying for 30 years. See, we institutionalize something. You don't have to wait 30 years. <clears throat> you don't have to wait 30 seconds. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask them? Yeah. Amen. I said amen. Glory to God. I want you to know. And so, <clears throat> but when we institutionalize, what we do is we begin to create um, our, our, our church culture around something. And it's got to be done this way. And it can't be done that way. You know, they even got people who start bragging, well, if you have to tarry longer, you'll appreciate it more. No, that's just time you didn't have the benefit of being filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, so you could do more for God. Oh, Took me 20 years of tearing before I got filled. Took me five seconds. Thank you for your enthusiasm. <clears throat> Amen. And so what, we, what happened in so much of the church was we began to institutionalize the move. Have you got the baptism? We came and we tarry for the baptism. We wait on the baptism. And then people would tarry three, four, five, six years, finally get filled with the Holy Ghost, speak in tongues, and then you wouldn't see them in church. Where were you this week? Well, didn't you hear? What? I got it. You got what? I got the baptism. 
<clears throat> you don't go until you get it. You get it so you can go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You receive that infilling to equip for service. Not so you can go around and tell everybody, you got it. Get your, get your Pentecostal merit badge. I got the new birth one. I got the sanctified one. Now I got the filled with the Holy Ghost. Are y'all here? And so by doing so, we go into the smoke and not the fire. But you see, it's not the smoke. Smoke runs people away. Don't believe me? Start a campfire tonight in your backyard and see what happens when the smoke blows somebody's direction. They all get it and run from the smoke. But what do they do when it's just fire? They all got to gather around. You see, the church is to be in the fire. And that's why the charge of God in Leviticus chapter 6 was that they were to keep, 12 and 13, were to keep the fire in the temple burning all the time. It was not to go out. <clears throat> because it is the fire that draws people. It is not the smoke. The smoke of institutionalized experience is not good enough for revival that sweeps the world into the kingdom of God. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can I get a holy hand clap on the Facebook page? Glory to God. Somebody shout glory. No. In order to do the work and the will of God, there has to be the fire. Remember John the Baptist says, there's one who comes back to me who's mightier than I. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. On that Pentecostal day, cloven tongues like as a fire appeared and sat upon them. Amen. <clears throat> and that church was birthed in fire. Then some pinhead comes along and goes, well, we got the canonicity of Scripture, and so we don't need any of the gifts of the Spirit anymore. Can you really be that stupid? I am telling you, if the church that began in Pentecost needed the fire, the church of the day more than ever needs the fire. We do not need intellectualism. We don't need to persuade people. We need a power and a fire of God that burns through the hearts of men and women and pierces into them and convicts them and calls them to God, hallelujah, and purges and cleanses them for service, hallelujah. We need a, need, we need a rebirthing and a rebaptism of fire in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ so that men and women are purified and they're the great conductors of the glory and the power of God. Let the church say amen. amen. I, love, I love good Bible teaching. We have to have it to grow. But we have to have the fire. We have to have the fire to stay inspired, to stay cleansed, to stay pure, to stay ready. We need the fire of God, hallelujah, burning in us. Can you say amen? amen. Three of you said amen. How about the rest of you? Hebrews 12, 29 says, our God is a consuming fire. Glory to God. You know, there's a Thessalonians. First Thessalonians 5, 19, we always quote this all the time, and we use the King Jimmy. Quench not the Spirit. But the NIV says, do not put out the Spirit's fire. Amen. We must again burn. And how are we going to do that? Well, you see in the book of Acts, the day of Pentecost came. And their fire appeared in them. And they were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. God would appear in the Old Testament 
on the temple as fire, in the mountain as fire, as that smoking furnace of fire before Abraham in the, in the uh, sacrifice he altered. The Pentecostal revivals of the early part of the last century would be manifest as buildings on fire and the fire trucks would come to put them out and they would not be on fire. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. First Corinthians 3.13 says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. That's, this is why we need fire. We don't need another feel-good social talk from the pulpit. We need fire from the pulpit. We need transformative power coming that, that burns the hearts of men and women. Just like when the disciples were on the road with Jesus after his resurrection and they didn't recognize him. And he began, he was talking to them and, open, and began to open to them the scriptures and share from them to Moses to the present how that Christ must needs die and then be raised from the dead. And then all of a sudden their eyes would open and they recognized him. And they said this, did not our hearts burn within us as he revealed the scriptures? Hallelujah. This is not about a church game. This is not about coming in here and finding out, you know, three steps to being successful without the Bible. Hello. How never to feel bad and only feel good. I'm telling you, the fire of God will burn out the junk. And sometimes when the junk gets burned out, it's tough because we like the junk. Make sure there ain't no Nerf balls out there in the, in the, in the canning. Hallelujah. I can't remember if I ever, actually ever did it. When I, told, I used to tell the girls, if the first guy that shows up at the house, I'm going to shoot him. So what I went and got with me was a ping pong gun. Because I was going to shoot the first guy with the ping pong gun that came up. And they were scared to bring somebody out. They, told, they, they were so stupid, they went and told the guys at school what her daddy said. My daddy said, if, you, if the first girl, guy that ever shows up at our house, he's going to shoot them. They wouldn't come to my house. <laughs> Jessica told. Jessica told, okay. <clears throat> well, how do you feel about that, Dennis? No, just ran off all the ones that weren't supposed to be there. I think I did shoot somebody with a ping pong ball gun. God has a plan. And the sons of Zadok, as we said earlier uh, in this teaching, when um, ben, uh, ben, uh, ben Fun or whatever his name was, Abathon, I got to look his name up because I, I guess it was one of them names you just don't remember real good. Yeah. Huh? He was, he was a priest that went after uh, the way of uh, Absalom against David when the kingdom was splitting. What was that? Was that not Abimelech? It was Abimelech or, yeah, one of them names. Thank you, Jesus. I got in some notes somewhere. Anyway, Abathar, Abathar went, he did not keep his charge. He went against the plan of God. And then Zadok was placed as high priest in his stead. And throughout the New Testament, I mean, the Old Testament after that, it talks about the sons of Zadok who kept the char their charge when the children of Israel went astray. It doesn't matter how high-class, entertainment-based, powerful, media-driven the church becomes. There has got to be a people who keep the charge of keeping the fire. Because... God said, I will bring them, the sons of Zadok, into my sanctuary. 
because they went not astray, but they kept their charge. What was the charge? Leviticus 6, 12, and 13. They were to keep the fire burning. Now, they didn't offer no, no strange fire, no fog machines instead of the glory cloud, no disco lights instead of flashes of glory. <clears throat> Hello. No feel good inspirational talks instead of fire anointed sermons. They kept their charge. How do we keep our charge? We stay full of the Holy Ghost. Throughout the book of Acts, you find out that the same bunch that got filled in one place got filled in another. They kept getting refilled. You got to get refilled. I went to Myrtle Beach this weekend, and I left town. I, I filled up the tank before we left town. I got down there, I had to fill up again. Why? Because we had burned up the fuel we used to get down there. And then I put in there to get down there. I had to add more fuel to get back. And the church has burned up the fuel of past experience, and they don't go get refilled, and so they try to live on the fumes and just run out of gas. And then we try to create some substitute for what only the fire will do. Hello? If we're going to see the glory of God, if we're going to see the revival the glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, then there's got to be a church on fire to bring it back. We need a fresh move of the Spirit. Baptizing people in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, burning with the fire of God, consumed with God. Man, I'll never forget. Listen. I wasn't some type of, you know, goody, goody, two-shoes boy. I was a jock. I was a stud. Thought I, was, I had a Fiat 124 Sports Spider convertible. I thought I was a stud. Had a British rider hat that I wore with my car. Now, don't ever get a Fiat 124 Sports Spider convertible, red, original era, and put an 8-track tape player in it. It's hard to get it in fifth gear. I had one. That's why I know. And when I got ready to put it in fifth, I had to take my hand and, and push it. I couldn't put my fingers there because it ran into the tape, the eight-track tape, and it started double-tracking. I'm talking language only a few people know about. Man, I thought I was something else. Lifting weights all the time. I lifted six days a week, hour and a half minimum of those six days. Took one day off. You know, I was just a beehead. Dating Janie. I mean, I had some eye candy to go with it. Hello. She was adorable. Still think she is. And uh, so it wasn't like I was, you know, like some, I ain't got nothing going for me. I guess I'll turn to Jesus. I thought I had everything going for me. I had graduated school, got a job, computer programming, was making good money for that day. I mean, interest-level programmer making 10 8 That's that was good money back then, you know. And, my, and gotten a brand-new Fiat. Traded my, my 74 for a, 2000, a, a 79 Spider 2000 from the factory. It had 60 miles on it when I got it. No, 300, because they had drove it from Wilmington back to Greenville. That's what it was. They, they picked it up in, Green, in Wilmington and drove it to Greenville. I think they took a little few extra trips out there where they had it out there riding. Because it's not 300 miles from Wilmington to Greenville. <clears throat> but man, when God got me, and I, I gave my heart to him and got filled with the Holy Ghost, it was the fire. That was 1979. A year later, I left for Rainbow Bible Training Center and, and you know, graduated. In May, this month, 40 years ago, I graduated from Raymond Bible Training Center. 40 years ago this month, I was ordained into the ministry. This is my 40th year in ministry this month. Now, Dr. Bill's got me beat. I listened to him on the radio when I got saved. WBZQ, 10-something AM, Greenville, North Carolina, 1080. 
1080 on your FM dial. Watch, listen to Brother Copeland, Brother Bill, Brother Hagen. They were all right there. He's the glue that kept them together. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then Janie got married, Janie and I got married this summer be 40 years. And I'll tell you, I can tell you from experience, there have been times that the fire got down to where we're just living in the smoke. And you, I'll be honest, when the fire gets down to smoke, it's harder to get it back up. You got to get, you got to get back in there. You got to work it. You got to get the bellows. You got to blow on. Hello? You got to get the other wood on there. You got to keep doing it until it catches back on fire. And then that fire will start back up and then, then the smoke will go away. But I tell you, there's a, there's, there is a renewing of the fire. We're not going to make it in the smoke. The fire will light your way. The smoke will block it. So how do we, we stay full of the Holy Ghost? We stay full of the Spirit of God. Amen? We go before God and we pray in the Spirit. Hallelujah. I remember Brother Hagin one time. When he first got baptized, and he was a good Baptist boy. He was Southern Baptist. <clears throat> and uh, he got filled with the Holy Ghost, spoke in tongues. And um, right after that, the devil came to him and said, you didn't get nothing. Now, I understand what he's talking about. Because I remember when I first got saved, um, that Sun, that Wednesday, the next day the devil said, that was just an emotional experience. You didn't get anything. Yeah. And that, that, I, I dealt with that about three or four days. Then I went that Sunday night and got baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. And then he came, he came to me that, that next morning and said, tongues are of the devil. I recognized the voice. It was the same voice that told me I wasn't saved on Wednesday. But now that I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, he left that alone and started saying tongues are of the devil. Devil, that, that's you. You a lie. Take that devil. And, uh, but Brother Hagin said, you know, the devil came to him and said, ah, oh, you didn't get anything. That's not real, whatever. He said, devil, I'm going to, just for that, I'm going to pray um, for an hour in other tongues. He got down, he prayed. He said, he said, it was hard praying. He said he learned what the meaning of watch and pray meant. Because he kept watching that watch for the hour to pass by. He said, he prayed, he said, surely I prayed for 45 minutes to an hour. He said it had been five minutes. He prayed an hour. He got done. The devil said, what good did that do you? You don't understand a thing you said. He said, Mr. Devil, the Bible says that he that prayeth on an unknown tongue speaketh mysteries to God. Howbeit, uh, no man understandeth him. He says, now just for that, I'm going to double up and I'm going to pray two hours in other tongues. And so he went, and that same thing. He said it was hard plowing. He said, and he prayed and prayed and prayed. He think he prayed an hour, and it had been 45 minutes. And then finally he struggled through, got to two hours. The devil came back to him and said, see, now you done wasted three hours. Now, Mr. Devil, I done told you once that the uh, Bible says, he that prayeth in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, and then in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. How be it no man understands him. But just for that, I'm going to double up and pray four hours. So he sat there and prayed four hours in other tongues. Yeah. And uh, I was praying. He, was, he said, somewhere around the, around the three-hour mark in that third set, so that's one, two, three, four, five. He's at six hours. He said, I hit a gusher. And he said, "Woo! that last hour just flew by. He said, the devil won't there when he got done. We've got to stay full of the Holy Ghost. We've got to stay full of the Spirit. The only way we're going to be able to keep the fire is to be full of the fire. Amen? 
Jesus would not let them go be witness until they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, according to Dr. Bill and Brother Hagen and now Pastor Ed, the church started when Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. They were born again. But the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit did not come on them until, to be filled with the Holy Spirit until the day of Pentecost. And we know, and, and, and we could go through the Bible, through the book of Acts, I can prove to you without any question that being filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, is an experience separate from the new birth. We are born of the Spirit, but we're also to be baptized in the Spirit. I got scripture that can prove there is no, and, and there's no, nobody you got that can unprove it. I've got too many scriptures that are very clear. Can I get an amen from the other doctor in the house? Thank you. <clears throat> Actually, he's Dr. Maximus. He's got multiple. <clears throat> or Maximus Doctorus. Hallelujah. Like a Roman emperor or something. <laughs> Maximus Doctorus Billus. <laughs> That's right, Belinda's doctor also. I wonder if that's why they call it a doctorette. That was a joke. Apparently it was too weak for even good laughter from anybody. Jesus told them, don't you even go out there to try to do anything. So they went and sat in the upper room for ever how long? Ten days about. He ascended on the 40th. Pentecost was the 50th day after the resurrection. Ten days they're up in the upper room. Uh, history teaches us that there were about 500 people who went into the upper room. But by the time that the day of Pentecost came, there were only 120 left who were hungry for the things of God who waited out past their flesh. Ooh, aren't you? I'm telling you, there's some things just good to wait for. I said, there's good, th there's things just good to wait for. Now, I have a policy in life. I don't wait in line at restaurants anymore. I used to. We'd go to Daryl's in Greenville, I think Daryl's 1907 in Greenville. And, um, after football games, Friday night football games, you know, we'd, we'd play football. Then everybody would go to Greenville and go to Daryl's. We'd have every high school in the county was there with a the girlfriend. Got on your letter jacket. If you won. Because if you didn't win, you didn't want nobody where you were from. You know. Because you didn't want to have to listen to the trash talk. But if you won that night and you showed it to against another county school that was, going to be, that was there, you wanted your letter jacket on. Yeah. Took it to you guys tonight, man. Yeah. And you, you knowing me, no, I wouldn't do a thing like that. <laughs> I mean, in your face, baby. We wore you out. Oh, yeah. And if you lost, then you, where do you go to school? Oh, I'm visiting from up north. <laughs> it's messy. Hello? How did I get on Daryl's? Huh? Yeah. We'd wait an hour and a half out there at 11 o'clock at night to go in and eat at Daryl's. If I go by your restaurant today and there's a 15-minute wait, I'm going down the road. I don't wait. You know? Because it's just not good enough to wait. But there are things in the Spirit that God is stirring up that I can. Now, let me say this. If I'm in a foreign country, now we went to the, when we were in Spain, in, in Madrid, we, um, we went and got on the waiting list for the Casa Botin, the longest, longest continu continuously serving restaurant in the world. They've been serving at this point now almost 300 years. The same dish, roast suckling pig, is, and it's right off the back corner of the Plaza Mayor in Madrid. Well, my wife wanted roast suckling pig. And let me tell you, it was worth the wait. Because we had a long wait to get into that little 
two, at that time, 275-year serving restaurants. Ooh, but it, you think pig is good? Get roast suckling pig. Oh, yeah, I know it still had the head on it and stuff, but, you know, okay, we can get over that. I think it freaked the kid, huh? Yeah, Jesse couldn't. Yes, they're doing a piggy. Babe had just come out. Yeah, they were suffering. <laughs> it's that babe. But it was good. There are things, listen, and now we got into the church. We, uh, uh, it ain't worth it. It ain't even worth getting up and driving to church, you know. It's not worth doing it. You know, it's not worth this. It's not worth that. But there are things that God is doing in the earth, and there are those who are keeping the flame in preparation of what God is, is, is attempting to do in the earth to bring great revival, that we're going to have to wait on the Lord. Not tarry to get filled with the Holy Ghost, but tarry now that we've got the Holy Ghost in the Spirit and pray things out and pray out things in the Spirit. Glory to God. God's speaking today. Are you here? I said, are you here? When I was at this wedding, there was a young man there. And, uh, I, we, and after I found some of his family connections and his history, I began to talk to him. And we, we talked for a long time. And the next, and, and overnight, all night long and all the next day, the Lord kept talking to me about him, about his family heritage and about, you know, so forth. And then finally said, you go tell him tonight when you see him that I said that because of his family heritage and history that God, I'm going to honor their faithfulness and their faith, and I'm raising up out of them a new generation that's going to take this message and the Word of God to the world and get people saved. Hallelujah. And for you to separate yourself and consecrate yourself to the will and purpose of God, and He'll lead and guide you into that. And so as we were leaving last night, I went over to a table where he was sitting, and I started talking to him a little bit. I said, well, you know, ever since yesterday, you know, I've been thinking about my childhood and growing up and all the connections and stuff. He said, I've been thinking about you all day. I said, well, the Lord said, and when I got done, he looked at me. He said, my pastor, who was, you know, the senior pastor of the church, was good friends with my, with uh, the former bishop, lifelong friends. And he pulled me aside last week and told me the same thing. He said almost verbatim. And so here I am at this wedding, you know, thinking, I got to go home. I mean, I, I felt like, you know, uh, Jaws. I'm tired and I want to go home. Y'all remember that on the boat? Yeah, they've been sitting on the boat. They've been, they've been fishing for the big, big shark all day long and they're tired. And, I'm tired and I want to go home. Y'all remember that? Who saw Jaws? Did y'all remember that song? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sitting here like, I'm like we got a four-hour drive. I didn't feel very anointed. Even arguing with the Lord, was it really him? So I said, well, Lord, if I run him again sometime, I'll tell him what you said. So I got out and told my brother goodbye. I told my mom and dad goodbye. I told, you know, different people goodbye. And, you know, and then I saw him and I went over and said, hey, you know, he said, I enjoyed meeting you. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we just, we talked for a second. And then I, I had to tell him. Well, that's when he told me that that pastor, his pastor, senior pastor, had told him the exact same thing last week. See, when we walk in the Spirit, and he, he said, I said, yeah. I said, same Holy Ghost. If it's the same Holy Ghost, you're not going to get a different message. Hello? It'd be different if I went up to him and said, well, you know, you look bum. You know, just because your family has a history don't mean you're going anywhere. You know, try to hang on and make it to the end. That went, you know, different, different word than they got before. The conf God brought confirmation. Set it all up. Are you here? I set it all up. Here I am thinking, I'm here for, you know, here, doing the, here at the wedding for my niece, which I was. I would have been there whether he was there or not. But God orchestrated that for that connection so he could speak to him from somebody who stays in the Spirit and hears from God. And will obey God. And I'm telling you, there's a rising generation. There are people that have been in the closet and hiding in the and hiding and staying before God. That God's bringing out to the forefront and to the light once again. 
And the glory once again shall shine forth. Hallelujah. And the fire of God will consume that which has been built by the hands of men because it's nothing but wood, hay, and stubble. But that which the Lord builds shall stand the fire of God. Shall it shall be proven by fire. And the glory shall shine forth. Hallelujah. And the fire will burn once again. And the nations shall turn. And the end shall come. And the master shall ascend. Or descend from the heavens. And ascend once again with his church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Father in the name of Jesus. We love you. We thank you for the power of the fire. We, we commit to be keepers of the flame. Keepers of the fire. <clears throat> Knowing that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So we keep the fire in our hearts burning. So that it will burn up all the works of the hands of men. And bring forth the purity and the glory of God that will sweep the nations in a great revival, ushering in the return of the Master. We thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Now next week, they're taking down all the ropes. Have y'all noticed that? I'm going to ask all y'all to move up. Come at least halfway from where you are. All right? Let's, let's crowd it in closer. Ain't nobody going to get the COVID. Why? Because you're a virus kill zone. You're a Psalm 91 believer. Can you say amen? The plague shall not come nigh my dwelling. Amen, 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 amen. All right, let's all stand up. Come here, we're going to receive communion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good time to search our hearts and make a new commitment fresh. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I, we've talked about this. You know, the church has many names for communion. Um, called the Lord's Supper. Called communion. Called Eucharist. Called the Holy Eucharist. Um, most of your liturgical churches refer to it as Eucharist. Uh, pretty, pretty much, you know, um, everybody else either calls it communion or the Lord's table. Actually, the Scripture says that when you come to us not to, not to eat the Lord's table, you come to party, basically. Paul was rebuking them. But um, whatever terminology we use, it's, it's referring to the same thing. This is the covenant meal. This is the meal of the covenant. This is not, listen to me now, this is not a traditional rite of the church. This is a covenant meal. When you study blood covenant, you understand that often, um, they would get together and they would drip, you know, cut themselves. Once they, those they were in covenant with, they would get together, cut themselves, drip blood into a, a, a chalice of grape juice or wine, and drink that as a covenant renewal. Amen. And Jesus said, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. This is a renewal of the covenant meal. He says that we are to judge ourselves lest we be judged. Amen? What? Are we walking in harmony with the covenant? Do we rightly discern the body of Christ? Do we rightly discern his purposes? Not, now listen, going to Pentecostal, we sat there, Lord, forgive me. If I, if, I sin, if, got, if I got one that slipped by and I don't even know that I sinned, forgive me. Because we thought we were going to die and go to hell if we took the communion table wrong. And I really don't think that's what his, 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 his emphasis was. And really it was, you know, are we pursuing God? Are we recognizing that he shed his blood for us, that his body was broken for us 
to bring us to a covenant with him where we can live in a life of victory, victory, victoriously in service to him, in obedience to him, doing his will. Amen. 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 <clears throat> but buddy, I tell you, when they brought the communion out of us by, we were, we were praying everything. We were casting out and praying forgiveness and everything else just in case we missed something because we didn't want to miss anything. Amen? And he says, I'll you eat the bread and drink the cup. You do show the Lord's death till he comes. So what's he doing? This meal points to the cross where his death, then the burial and resurrection took place, and points to the second coming. It is the covenant renewal between those two events where we walk in harmony with God. He took the bread, break it, and said, they take it, this is my body which is broken for you. And the Word of God says, by his stripes we were healed. Let us eat together. And after the same manner also he took the cup, saying this is the New Testament, the new covenant in my blood, the new covenant, the new and the better covenant, established upon better promises. For the blood of bulls and goats, the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, who offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve, to serve the living God. Let us drink together in covenant relationship. Hallelujah. The Bible says after they received, they sang a hymn, went out. So, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank God for his blood. I'm not the singer in the family. We know that. At least I, don't, I didn't train wreck. Hallelujah. Now, you know that scripture that says, make a joyful noise to the Lord? The Ed Taylor Paris phrase version says, make a glad racket to the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I like glad rackets. I'm happy. I'm happy with my glad racket. Hallelujah. Yeah. I can have a good time with the Lord doing a glad racket. That's why I do it when I'm by myself, because nobody else gets blessed like I do. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We love you. We're keepers of the fire. Yeah. Pentecost is coming. Yeah. There's a new Pentecost coming. Oh, yeah. Azusa Street's, uh, the, the, the Azusa Street hundred, hundred's coming. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's a great revival coming on the earth. Oh, yeah. It's already starting. Oh, it's, I mean, it's gearing up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You better get ready. I mean, we're going to have to get the temptations out here. Ah, get ready, get ready, because here it comes, get ready. All right. Um, we'll save that song too. Ever seen the fire the way that I have? It's all right. Burns out the sin and the junk every day and night. It's out of sight. So twiddly dee, twiddly dumb. Look out, devil, because here we come. Ah, get ready, get ready. <laughs> okay, y'all go ahead. <laughs> Hallelujah. 